This is a new addition to our series where we would be starting the analysis and the summary of Kurukshetra and Yojana. So we will start with Kurukshetra April edition 2017. Uh, the edition was focused or based on horticulture. So this chapter, this session would be based or dedicated totally on horticulture. Now let's understand the meaning of horticulture first. Horticulture is a practice that includes flowers, fruits, vegetables, medicinal plants, ornamental plants, aromatic plants. Then you would have practices like bee culture, beekeeping, sericulture, mushroom cultivation, etc. So all these fall under the idea of horticulture. Now India is specifically doing well in horticulture because since last three years in India the horticulture production has is much more as compared to the food grain production. That means India is getting substantial from the horticulture produce and India has potentials for more export options or more export avenues when it comes to horticulture. Now what are the benefits of growing horticulture crops? First, it provides high yield per unit area. So since there is more yield, there are more returns from the, uh, the amount that is sown in. It provides efficient use for wasteland because on wasteland you cannot grow uh, food grains or any other culturable crop. So the only thing can be grown would be the orchids. Again, you have better use of the undulating landforms, especially in the hilly areas and the northeastern parts of India. It provides employment opportunities. Most of the people engaged in employment are women in this sector. It also provides businesses to nursery and is mushroom cultivation is one of the upcoming cultivations. We will see more detail on mushroom in the upcoming slide. Now India has also emerged as one of the largest producers of coconut. India is again a leading producer and exporter of tea, coffee, cashews, spices, fresh and processed fruits and among flowers it's a major producer and exporter of cut and dried flowers. So cut and dried flowers are our specialties. So all these help us understand why floriculture and horticulture are important. Now if it comes to GDP, we get 30% of the GDP from horticulture practices, 13% of the cropped area falls under horticulture and nearly 20% of the labor force is engaged with horticulture. Now in the fruits, you have banana which predominates the horticulture crops followed by mango and citrus fruits. And among the states you have Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka which are the main centers for food production. Again 8 states contribute to 70% of the food production. Now India is first in terms of production among these fruits and vegetables. So you have mangoes, banana, pomegranate, sapota, lime, anola, peas, okra that is lady finger and spices. So India is the largest producer of these crops. Uh, not only crops, I would say the vegetables and the fruits. India is second leading producer for brinjal, cabbage, onion and cauliflower. And India is third leading producer for potato and tomato. So these are some of the key highlights from the Kurukshetra which you must know. And these could be asked directly when it comes to objective type of questions. Now again, what are the key facts? In horticulture production, Uttar Pradesh beats West Bengal which is again followed by Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. When it comes to fruit production, you have Maharashtra state which leads. Again for vegetable, you have West Bengal that leads. So this is a general trend of production that we can see. Now horticulture is commonly practiced in small and marginal farms. So you do not require a big slot of land or a big patch of land to have the horticulture crops or flowers to be grown in. Uh, one of the leading examples is the Jamnagar refinery complex. It produces nearly 127 varieties of mango and it is spread over 600 acres of land. Now this complex beats the Israel and the Brazil in terms of productivity in mango production. Again, 
the idea under horticulture practices as we said uh, to bring around the 240 million acres of culturable wasteland under horticulture and orchids. So you have more crops that would become under fruit and vegetable cultivation or flower cultivation. Now when it comes to individual fruit crops, let's say banana, Madhya Pradesh is the leading producer of banana. The leading producer of mangoes is Andhra Pradesh and in terms of citrus production you have Karnataka that beats Punjab and Rajasthan. However, worldwide the highest productivity of banana is seen in Indonesia. Now maximum veg vegetable production as we said occurs in West Bengal. We also saw this in the previous slide. Now when it term, comes to the overall trend of production of fruits and vegetable, India stands second largest in the world in terms of production of both fruits and vegetables. Among vegetables you have cabbage which has the highest productivity in North Korea followed by Japan and Brinjal you have highest productivity in Spain followed by China. So India has still high standards to meet these demands. Now again there are two major uh, sections under horticulture. One is the floriculture that is the flower cultivation and the next is mushroom cultivation that we will look into individually. Now when it comes to floriculture, the important and the key aspect is floriculture is a high value crop and it's a low volume crop. So you have a floriculture that is sustained for export industry. So cut and dried flowers are the major exports from India. The nations which are known for floriculture practices are Netherlands, Colombia, Ecuador and Belgium. In India you have Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and West Bengal which leads the states among the production of floriculture. Where we export is primarily United States, Netherlands and Germany and that is for the floriculture. Now our exports from other sectors, so our exports from vegetable goes to Sri Lanka, United States and UAE predominantly. Our grape exports mainly go to UK and Netherlands and our ex export of fruit is mainly going to Bangladesh, UAE and Saudi Arabia. So where do our export grows? Which uh, states are predominant in production of specific crops? All these are important information that you must and must know. Now what are the challenges that our floriculture industry is facing? First of all the higher import tariff that it faces because of which you have to provide either the crop at a lower price or you have to meet the tariff price so that you can have sustainable amount of exports that you can generate. Again there is low availability of perishable carriers, there is less lack of technology to uh, for refrigeration and transportation of floriculture crops and the transportation rate itself is much higher for floriculture. Now comes the mushroom industry. Why mushroom cultivation is important? Mushroom is an important source of vitamin B. Again it is an important source of vitamin D. It has low calorie, 90% of the mushroom is predominantly water. Most common mushroom that is found in India is the button mushroom. Again it has high quantity of estrogen which acts to reduce the cancer. Uh, so you have more of mushroom growth that is coming up because of its health benefits. Again it is rich in potassium, selenium, other minerals and antioxidants. What are the conditions that a mushroom requires? So mushroom usually grows in 28 to 30 degrees Celsius temperature with a relative humidity of 80 to 90 percent. Again you have button mushroom as I said which is the most popular mushroom that is seen in Uttar Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana. Then you have seasonal mushroom crops that is grown in Solan and Kangra. So in Solan you have the YD Parmar University which excels in the horticulture practices. Uh, the mushroom cultivation started with Solan with the help of Germany in 1960s and in 1980s white button mushroom were the most common mushrooms and they were more mainly grown in the hilly areas with lot of rain in Jammu Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh areas. Now this mushroom should be grown with very uh, kind of care because it is susceptible to numerous infections. Some of the common diseases that it has is dry bubble that's brown spot, wet bubble that is white mold, cobweb, green mold and fa false truffle are the common diseases that affect the mushroom plant. 
and when you are doing a mushroom cultivation for a commercial purpose the minimum land size that is required is nearly 1.5 acres with an investment of nearly 107 lakhs uh, on this piece of land now what are the various schemes that government has promoted for horticulture practices so the first scheme is the national horticulture mission it is started in 1984-85 and it is now the part of midh that is mission for integrated development of horticulture this was released during the 12th plan this mission also includes the bamboo and the coconut cultivation and the bamboo and the coconut mission we will see more on the midh that is mission for integrated development of, on horticulture in the next slide Again, other important missions are the Rashtriya Kishi Vikas Yojana, the special mission that focuses for the northeast and the hilly areas. Then you have, as we said, the Vaidhi Parmar University in Solan, which was established in 18, uh, 1985, works for horticulture crops. You have the Indian Institute of Horticultural Research established in 1967 at Hesargatta, Bangalore, that works for uh, renovations and more uh, research and developments in horticulture practices. Now coming on to the mission for integrated development of horticulture. It is composed of six schemes, three are centrally sponsored scheme and three are central, uh, central sector schemes. So under centrally sponsored scheme, the first is the national horticulture mission that started in 2004 and 5. sorry I uh, mentioned the wrong dates there. So you have the national horticulture mission that started in 2004 and 5. Again this national horticulture mission has some of the important aspects. First was to increase definitely the production of horticulture crops, to rejuvenate the orchids and the lands that are vacant, to use the wasteland areas to create water resource for the development of horticulture crops. So these were some of the major ideas for the national horticulture mission. The next was horticulture mission for northeast and Himalayan states started in 2001 and 2002. This mainly focused on the horticulture cropping in the hilly terrains. So it was mainly focused on flowers and floriculture practices. The next is national bamboo mission. 2001 and 2. So it talked about low volume high value crops. Again bamboo was seen as a traditional input for most of the industries. So development of bamboo mainly in the northeast and the uh, semi-arid areas was the main focus. The three central sector schemes included the National Horticulture Board which was established in 1984 with its headquarters at Gurgaon. The next is the Coconut Development Board established in 1981 with the headquarters at Cochin and finally the most important of these is the Central Institute of Horticulture established in Nagaland in 2006 with its headquarter at Medzi Farm. Medzi Farm is the major center for horticulture industry and this promotes the horticulture mission for northeast and the Himalayan states. So the idea is increasing the growth of the horticulture crops, again convergence and uh, convergence of the stakeholders under one sector. So you have a kind of unified format that was launched under the MIDH and this now works for the development of all the horticulture missions under one head. Now next is few of the schemes that have the government has released for the horticulture benefit. Now there are some standards that WHO lays forward. So WHO lays forward a standard which talks about the cons consumption. So it talks about 400 grams of consumption per person per day and that should be done as 80 grams per person per day at a minimum serving of 5. So that's the consumption standards for fruits and vegetables that has been provide, pro propounded by the World Health Organization. Now the National Institute of Nutrition Hyderabad in India gives 300 gram per person per day as the standards for uh, vegetable consumption of which 50 grams should be the green leafy vegetables, 50 grams should be roots and tubers and remaining 200 grams should be other vegetables. So these are the guidelines that a person's daily requirement should be met with in order to uh, remove or be away from any kind of deficiencies. Now there are some projects that government has started. The first is Arya that is attracting and retaining youth in agriculture. So the basic idea of this scheme is 
to bring the youth back into the agricultural practices rather than the urbanization movement that has gained momentum it's important that the youth the educated youth is retained with the agricultural practices so that new cropping practices and technology could help bring up agricultural revolutions in india so the idea is to establish the network groups to mo do more of capital intensive investments demonstrate the functional linkages develop the functional linkages with other industries and this project has been partnered with the indian council for agricultural research the next similar uh, scheme is ready that is rural entrepreneurship awareness development yojana so this talks about the rural entrepreneurship and how that could be brought about is through the basic methods of student projects hands on training in plant training so training at the centers experiential learning and rural awareness work experience program so these are some of the basic ideas through which the scheme ready has been initiated now why as i said horticulture crops are important in our diet so we talked about the who and the nii nin guidelines so it's important to curb the protein energy malnutrition which commonly leads to diseases like kashyakar and marasmus in small children to beat the problems of iron deficiency which is commonly uh, iron which can be commonly obtained from spinach jaggery pomegranate and figs so you have iodine deficiency and vitamin a deficiency which could be beaten by the carotenoids intake from the green leafy vegetables so you have all these deficiencies that could be fought with if you have su sufficient intake of fruits and vegetables in the daily diet now what are the basic challenges that the horticulture industry is facing the first is the productivity so despite of the large area under production the yield per unit area is not substantial so we definitely have the chance of uh, the scope for improvement in the productivity we can use more of bio resources it helps to mitigate the problem of climate change because you will be bringing wastelands under uh, under horticulture practices then there is problem of mass destruction so lot of flowers lots of fruits which are kind of highly perishable go under the problem of mass destruction so there is proper refrigeration and proper transportation that should be that should taken take, take place then there is multiplicity of intermediaries so removal of those intermediaries is again important and pest management strategies are very very important and pest management is a major threat to fruits and vegetable industry now what are some of the efforts done so you have a kind of indo israel center for excellence in vegetable which has been established at garakunda in karnal and it aims to set up greenhouses and polyhouses for the cultivation purposes so the basic idea is a kind of protected cultivation that should occur and again again important effort is streamlining the agricultural produce now this can be done by bringing in again the agri agri tech infrastructure funds which is a kind of online integration of the various agriculture product marketplaces and all these marketplaces could be brought under one common head with this infrastructure fund so these are some of the ways and the challenges that we need to uh, address while we are talking about the problems of horticulture in india with this we cover the first lecture which is focusing on the gs for based on yojana in kurukshetra we'll be continuing more of these classes any of your feedbacks on this would be highly appreciated have a good day ahead